Once you press down that button, you'll see the scissors icon, but don't let that worry you. Just hold down the Option or Alt keys and drag the event to the position where you want the copy to go, then release the mouse button. And there's your copied event. To drop an event in the same position on the timeline but on another track, you select the event, then hold down Alt on your PC, Option on the Mac, move to the next track, and to lock the movement vertically, you press Control on your PC or Command on the Mac and then release. The addition of the control or command keys locks the movement vertically so that you can place precisely. The next tool is the range selector. You can use this to delete a portion of an event from view or to check on its properties, etc. Let's try it out. I'm going to select and delete this extra portion of the voice that I don't need. I select it and then press delete on my keyboard and it's gone. Not permanently, however, I can still restore it. Now let me check the noise level of this selection. Audio, statistics. I see that my peak amplitude during this silent portion is minus 44, so my background is quiet, but not that quiet. Let's close the stats window, and let's restore our project window. Our next tool is the splitter. We use this to cut events. Icons are blue, by the way, when they're active. If the snap tool here is toggled off, then we're able to split events freely anywhere we like. Just hover over the event and left click to cut the event. A line appears on the event indicating the split. To undo, we can go to Edit and select Undo Split or just Control or Command Z. If Snap Mode is toggled on, you'll only be able to cut according to the reference you've set up. In my case, it's a grid at the bar level. Cutting to a bar grid is handy if, for example, you're creating a loop and need to cut an event precisely into bars. With Snap on, I'm only able to cut right at the bar line. If I try to split at a bead, I can't. Let's switch the Snap reference to Beat. Now I'm able to split in between the bars at each beat. For more information on how to change the Snap reference, please see our tutorial later in this course on Snap Mode. Using the Snap Mode can save you a lot of time and we'll learn about this later on. By the way, if you don't see some of the tools that I've been talking about in the last few minutes, you can right-click or control-click on any of the tool buttons. This pulls up a contextual menu from which you can select the tools that you'd like to display. Let's hide the tool buttons. And the editing tools that we were just talking about are now gone. However, when I hold down a right-click or a command-click on any blank area of the tool panel, I'll see them. Let's restore them since we use them frequently. Default takes you back to Cubase's default settings for the display. It's possible that your screen resolution doesn't let you see all the tools, so select only those which you need at the time. You can configure which tools are visible and hidden using the Setup option. Currently, my visible items are View Switches, Transport Buttons, Tool Buttons, Auto Scroll, and Snap Quantize. Here are my hidden items. From the setup window, I can modify the order in which they appear. And now the transport buttons appear on the far left. Let's restore to their original position and click OK. You can scroll through your project using the horizontal scroll bar or through the track listing with the vertical scroll bar. And that's pretty handy when you've got a lot of tracks. If you select an event, split in one place, and then hold down the Alt key on your PC or Option key on your Mac and split it again a bar later, Cubase will automatically repeat that split for the length of your event. This is a convenient way to break up an event into its component bars and beats and of course you can use that to create loops and mixes. Let's undo that repeat split. Now let's talk about the glue tool. The glue tool is how you join events that you've cut with the split tool. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can see how the glue tool works. Let's add another split. Activate the split tool. We'll split right about here. Now activate the glue tool and click right before the split. And this will glue these two events back together. The Erase tool is new and it works very simply. You activate it and then click on the event you want to delete. 
This doesn't modify your source audio file, of course. You can easily restore any portion that you delete this way. The functionality of the next tool, the Zoom tool, will be familiar to you. You click on an event to zoom in. And to zoom out, control or command click. Next is the mute tool. This lets you mute an event. Just click the event that you want to mute while the tool is active. And this lets you hear playback minus the event you've muted without your having to delete it. Click again to unmute. Let's remove some of the events we copied and pasted here. Now let me trim the piano. I'm not able to. Ah, that's because I've got snap toggled on. Let's toggle that off, and now I can trim freely here. I'm going to trim it in as close as I can to the start of the audio so that I can copy and paste this precisely later on. Just zoom in a little bit more. Okay, there we go. That looks all right. Let's zoom back out. A left click on this arrow down here will give us some preset zoom positions. Let's use zoom full. Let's do the same at the end. Trim it in tight. Zoom in a little bit more to get as close as I can. And back to zoom full. Now let's trim the voice. I'm going to copy the two bars of piano and push back the voice so that I can use that piano phrase as an intro. Now let's activate the magnetic cursor snap mode. This will make the events touch without me having to position at a tight zoom. Alt drag to copy the event, drop it and it snaps into place. Snap off. So we've duplicated our piano. Let's push back the voice to match the second piano event. And let's try to line them up well now. Zoom in a bit, drag, match the wavelengths. Now we've got a two bar intro of the piano before the voice kicks in. Zoom full. And let's have a listen. There's the piano intro. And now the voice drops in. Press the spacebar to stop playback. Okay, let's return our cursor to zero, and because auto scroll is active, the window's position will adjust. For fun, let's apply some color to our events. Let's say green on the piano. Now let's select another color for the voice. Let's say purple. Just click the event to apply the color. Activate the object selector. And let's zoom out a bit. This concludes our tutorial on basic editing. We'll be covering many of these tools in greater detail.